All right. So welcome everyone to the Southern Africa Food Security Outlook Briefing for the June 2023 to January 2024 period. I'm Benjamin Davies, a Senior Food Security Analyst at Fusenet, and I'm joined by Lita Branham, also a Senior Food Security Analyst at Fusenet, and Mikhail Tefasalasi, a Food Security Analyst, uh, and they will both be presenting later in the presentation. So today we'll go over a brief overview of FuseNet's analytical approach, the key messages, the current situation across the region, uh, the assumptions through January 2024, and then go into a little bit more detail on our areas of concern, Malawi and DRC. So FuseNet's approach to early warning analysis uses the scenario development methodology. First, we set our scenario parameters for our most likely scenario. Then we collect available primary and secondary data to understand the current drivers of food insecurity and classify current food insecurity outcomes. We then develop key assumptions for our most likely scenario and, and then use those assumptions to understand how they will impact household income and food sources to then describe and classify projected household food insecurity. We then use the IPC 3.0 scale, which I'll describe in the next slide, to classify area level food insecurity outcomes. And finally, we identify events that could change FuseNet's most likely scenario. So this is the IPC 3.0 area level phase classification scale. There are five phases with phase one being minimal, uh, which is in, colored in green on the far left, and then phase five being catastrophe in maroon on the far right. For an area to be classified in a phase, at least 20% of the population must be classified at that phase. And this is demonstrated in the bottom half of the slide. In phase three, which is uh, the, the middle phase in orange, um, and households typically start facing food consumption gaps or begin engaging in unsustainable coping strategies. For phase three and higher, humanitarian food assistance is needed to pro protect livelihoods and fill food consumption gaps. We denote an exclamation point in our mapping where there are phase classifications that would likely be at least one phase worse without current or programmed humanitarian assistance. And in our remote monitoring area uh, countries, the country phase classification is determined by the worst area level classification within that country. Now looking at the seasonal calendar for a typical year in the Southern Africa region, we're currently in the post harvest and winter season with the second harvest taking place. And this is very often horticultural and it's occurring across most of the region along with the wheat harvest. Around September, households are likely to begin preparing for land for the upcoming agricultural season. And as we look towards the second half of the outlook period, this is the October to January period, the start of the rainy season and the lean season often begins along with the peak of agricultural labor demand. And then it should also be noted that in the DRC, the cassava harvest is ongoing year round. So moving to the key messages, the 2023 main season harvest finalized under mixed conditions as below average rainfall, prolonged dry spells and flooding resulted in poor to failed crop conditions in parts of Angola, Zimbabwe, Malawi and Mozambique. However, the regional harvest is expected to be similar to the five year average. Staple food prices are seasonally declining in most markets, improving household access to food. However, prices remain higher than last year in the five year average. In Zimbabwe and DRC, local currency instability and depreciation are driving commodity price increases in local currencies, which is negatively, negatively impacting the ability of poor households to access food. Conflict also remains a major driver of food insecurity in parts of DRC and Mozambique, where households remain displaced and household livelihood and market activities are disrupted. In Zimbabwe, macroeconomic conditions are volatile following a sharp decline in the value of the Zimbabwean dollar impact which is impacting households that are earning in that currency however it's important to note that most of the economy is operating in the in usd and the south african rand overall crisis ipc phase three outcomes are expected to continue to at, through at least january in areas where the 2023 harvest was poor and in areas affected by conflict so moving now to the current situation the 2022-2023 rainy season concluded with mixed conditions across the region with cum cumulatively above average rainfall, which is shown in green and blue on the chart on the left, which is also comparing rainfall to the 40-year average. 
And you can see that rainfall was cumulatively above average in eastern and southern parts of the regions and cumulatively below average across much of the central and western parts of the region as shown by the orange and red on the, on the figure. Additionally, rainfall was amongst the lowest on record in, south, in southeastern Angola, northeastern Namibia, and northwestern Botswana, along with southern Zambia, localized areas of western Zimbabwe, and northeastern Madagascar. And this is noted in that figure on the right, as you can see in the red to maroon co colors. Alternatively, heavy rainfall resulted in some of the wettest seasons on record, cumulatively, as shown in the blue colors in southeastern Mozambique, parts of Malawi, and localized areas of eastern DRC. So the various weather shocks resulted in a mixed harvest across the region with a bumper harvest in the Maze Triangle of South Africa, as shown in blue on the figure uh, on the figure on the slide. However, uh, hot and dry conditions in the western parts of the region and the impact of Cyclone Freddy resulted in a poor to failed harvest, as shown by the orange and red colors. And this is particularly the case in southern Malawi. Although not captured in this uh, in this chart from uh, GeoGlam, uh, key, key informants and field assessments um, indicate that prolonged dry spells in February during critical periods of water for maize resulted in below average and poor harvest in southwestern Mozambique and, south, and southern Zimbabwe. Nevertheless, following the end of the harvest, uh, USDA Foreign Agricultural Service estimates, their estimates suggest that the recent harvest was around 43.6 million metric tons, as, as shown by the chart on the slide, with production in blue and opening stocks in green. However, this is lower than last year's bumper harvest, which was just over 45 million metric tons and slightly higher than the five-year average. However, when we break this down at a country level, uh, this figure really highlights the importance of South Africa's maize production to the region, uh, with the black bar showing production in 2023, the green bars in 2022, and the blue bars, the recent five-year average. In South Africa, the harvest this year is estimated by USDA Foreign Agriculture Service to be around 8% higher than the five-year average, uh, with their estimates in Zimbabwe, Angola, Lesotho, and Malawi indicating that their that national production ranged from one to six percent lower than the five-year average, while it was three percent higher than the five-year average in the DRC and Mozambique. And just noting that these are national estimates. Across the region, um, staple food prices have declined in most markets following increased market supply from the main harvest as shown by the green line on the graph. And this is improving household access to food. However, prices remain higher than last year, which is shown by the orange uh, dashed line and the five-year average, which is shown by the tan col columns in most markets. For example, maize grain prices in Maputo, Mozambique, which you can see in the lower left of the slide, and local rice prices in Antanavero, Madagascar in the upper right, um, really indicate that how prices are declining but remain well above the five-year average and prices last year. However, in South Africa, maize prices are steadily declining and are lower than last year as seen in the upper, upper left figure. In Zimbabwe, maize grain prices in the Zimbabwean dollar have sharply increased following the rapid devaluation of the, Zimbabwe, of the Zimbabwean dollar in May and June. However, prices in US dollar, USD and South African rand have remained stable. And I'll go into the economic, uh, the macroeconomic conditions of Zimbabwe a little later in the presentation. Across the region, macroeconomic conditions are mixed with annual inf inflation rates ranging from around 5 to 7% in Lesotho, Mozambique, and South Africa to around 178% uh, in Zimbabwe, as shown by the table on the, on the left. However, when we look at the trend of inflation rates, which is the figure on the right, we can see how inflation has increased in Malawi from around 25% in July of last year to around 30% um, to 30% in, 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 in May. And Malawi is shown um, in the brown line at the top of the figure. Um, additionally, inflation in DRC, which is the green line, has also increased from less than 10% in, Ju in July 2022 to around 27% in May 2023. However, inflation rates in, in Angola, which is the blue line, have steadily declined over the last year 
from over 20% in July of last year to around 11% in June 2022. However, in Zimbabwe, which is indicated by the black line, um, inflation is calculated using a blended method of US dollars and Zimbabwean dollars. Um, and this doubled to around 175% in June um, in June, after the government partially floated the Zimbabwean dollar. Uh, um, across the rest of the region, though, inflation rates have largely stayed stable over the past year. Another driver for high prices in the region are high fuel prices. Uh, in South Africa, diesel prices have declined to, to be similar to what prices were in late 2021, which is lowering transportation costs. However, the high fuel prices in Malawi, Mozambique, DRC, and Zimbabwe are likely going to keep transportation costs high, and these costs will likely, be, will likely continue to be passed on to consumers as staple foods begin to travel to markets locally and regionally. So I'll now shift gears slightly um, and quickly provide a brief highlight on Zimbabwe and Mozambique in order to try to capture what the major drivers are across much of the reg region. For those not familiar with Zimbabwe, the country has faced an economic crisis for a number of years. Currently, there are multiple exchange rates um, used in the country, and, th and this is shown in the figure on the left, including the auction rate, the interbank rate, and the parallel market. Additionally, many households operate in US dollars and South African rand. However, civil servants and government employees, such as nurses and teachers, for example, are earning in Zimbabwean dollars. In late 2022, Zimstat reported that over 80% of food purchases and other transactions in Zimbabwe were conducted in US, USD. And this percentage is likely significantly higher now following the sharp devaluation of the Zimbabwean dollar in the last two months. Additionally, field assessments in Southern Zimbabwe in May reported that prices of goods and services are pegged almost exclusively in South African Rand. The US dollar is accepted begrudgingly at prevailing exchange rates, while the local Zimbabwean dollar currency is not acceptable in any form, whether it be cash, mobile, or electronic. Households earning in Zimbabwean dollars are converting their earnings to South African Rand or US dollars at exorbitant parallel market rates. In June 2023, prices of staple goods in Zimbabwean dollars increased sharply following that the rapid depreciation of the Zimbabwean dollar against the USD. Official interbank and parallel market rates increased by 335 and 157% between May and June, as you can see this um, on the graph on, on the left. Following the government's announcement that banks would now be the primary source of foreign currency traded at market determined exchange rates. The depreciation of the Zimbabwean dollar has rapidly increased the cost of living for those households that are earning in Zimbabwean dollar and reducing their purchasing power. However, an increasing proportion of households are engaging in petty trade, casual labor, and self-employment across the country, and they earn most of their income and purchase primarily in, South Af in US dollars and South African rand, they're, they're, thereby somewhat cushioning themselves from the price volatility that we see in the Zimbabwean dollar. Nevertheless, um, US dollar prices have remained stable or declined over the last year and a half, and you can see this on the figure on the on the chart on the right, which is showing the price of basic goods in a formal supermarket in Harare. Um, however, I'll note that um, informal market prices are typically much cheaper um, than USD prices in the formal market. And because of the, the stability of the prices in the informal markets, poor households are increasingly purchasing their food from those markets and, and then again cushioning themselves from the price volatility that we're seeing in the Zimbabwean dollar. So another key driver of acute food insecurity in the region is conflict, particularly in, in Mozambique and the DRC. And the DRC will be covered in more detail later in the presentation. In Mozambique, there's been a decline in the number of conflict events um, over the last couple of months, but they are, continue, they are ongoing in the northeastern part of Cabo Delgado, as you can see on the figure on the right. With the decline in conflict events, displaced households are beginning to return home in order to better access food and reestablish re access to their typical livelihoods. According to um, IOM DTM, the top three districts hosting returnees 
or Muslim, uh, Muslim, Muslim by the Praia, Palma, and Mudimbe, despite these areas uh, still recording conflict events. As people begin to return home, the number of IDPs has declined by around 19% since November 2022, um, although there still are around 781,700 IDPs that remain displaced in Cabo Delgado, as shown by the figure on the left. The number of IDPs has likely continued to decline with the ongoing return of households to their places of origin. So now moving sort of uh, over to regional assumptions. Staple food prices are largely expected to follow seasonal trends and remain higher than the five-year average across much of the region. However, the bumper harvest in South Africa is likely to lower prices below last year. And you can see that in the, the chart on, on the, the price projection for Ranfontein on the far right. Um, ad additionally, uh, in many other monitored markets, in the region, prices are likely going to be similar or higher than than last year, as shown by the price the price projections for Mozambique and um, Maseru in, in Lesotho. So, as we look forward through uh, January 2024, there's likely going to be an erratic and delayed start to the 2023-2024 rainy season, and this is particularly the case in southern and central areas of the region um, due to El Nino and and this erratic start is going to take place during the October 2023 to January 2024 um, period. This forecast uh, is expected to limit agricultural labor opportunities and household access to income in late 2023 and early 2024. Additionally, food prices are anticipated to remain elevated amid weak and unstable economies across the region. So looking at projected food security outcomes um, for the june to september period and october 2023 to january 2024 period most households across the region are in the post-harvest period with improved uh, food access and diet diversity uh, staple food supplies have particularly improved in parts of the region where rainfall was average above average um, including some of the surplus areas of lesotho northern parts of uh, zimbabwe central and northern malawi northern and central Madagascar and northern Mozambique. In these areas, households are likely experiencing minimal or stressed outcomes, and the stress is likely being driven by the high cost of living. However, in areas where the harvest is expected to be well below normal um, due to limited access to seeds or inputs or affected by weather shocks or conflict, crisis IPC uh, outcomes are expected. As households access to food stocks decline and reliance on market purchases increase, there will likely be an increase in the number of households experiencing stressed IPC phase two and crisis IPC phase three outcomes from October to ja January, as high food prices and limited agricultural labor opportunities due to an erratic start to the rainy season rest restrain the household access to food and income. So when we look at how regional assistant needs um, are likely comparing to last year and, and previous years, regional assistance needs are likely going to be similar to last year with areas of greatest concern um, between October 2023 and January 2024 being Eastern DRC, Southern Malawi, Southern and Western Zimbabwe, Cabo Delgado and Southern Mozambique and Southern Madagascar. I'll now turn the presentation over to my colleague, Mikhail to discuss Malawi. Thanks, Benja. This is Mikael. Uh, I'm the SG analyst uh, for FuseNet. I'll be presenting for Malawi. I'll start by displaying some of the timeline for uh, cumulative shocks in Malawi that had an impact on current production. Over the past few years, Malawi had experienced a number of shocks that have a cumulative impact on production, including the tropical storm Anna and tropical depression Gombe that resulted in excessive flooding and crop losses. The affected householders could not replant due to the loss of livelihood assets, reducing their capacity to replant current for the current production season. Additionally, there was a poor tobacco harvest in 2022, which lowered households' access to income and foreign earning also uh, for the country. Malawi has been securing over 55 percent of the total exporters from uh, tobacco and it was a major source of income 
However, the tobacco harvest in and auction this year is progressing well, and above average tobacco prices are supporting producers in the north and central regions. In 2023, Cyclone Freddy made landfall in southern Malawi in mid-March, causing massive flooding, crop damage, water logging, uh, particularly the southern parts where the most affected in the lowland is also, as you can see on the picture. There were over 650 campsites established to host displaced people, uh, estimated 670,000 people were displaced, as you see the pictures on, on the right side. But um, the, the temporary sites have been closed uh, and the people have returned to, uh, back to their village. Um, even though some of them, they are still living in some kind of temporary shelter, but near to their village. Next slide. Field assessments conducted by Fusionet and, uh, and other major partners uh, estimated that the agricultural production in the flood affected regions, especially by the cyclone, will be lower than uh, average, uh, around 30 to 35% below average. This can be also seen in the picture on the slide showing the loss of crops. Um, it was happening also when the crops were about to be harvested. That made um, like huge financial loss, especially for the poor people. Additionally, the 2023 national harvest was affected by reduced um, access of fertilizer and inputs um, combined with the tropical cyclone. The frequent climatic shocks have posed considerable difficulties for the agriculture sector and overall economy as a crop production plays a vital role in food security and livelihoods. There was also a severe infrastructure damage, as you can see on the photos. Major roads and bridges were cut off by flood. Food supplies were also uh, affected. There was limited movement of food in and out of the affected area, which increased the food prices. Next slide. Looking at the maize prices, as shown in the graph, prices are higher than last year and five-year average. Households purchasing power have been declining due to high inflation and lower employment opportunities, which has led to reduced access to food. Maize prices in southern Malawi are expected to follow seasonal trends and likely to remain higher compared to last year or five-year average. Currently, the maize price is 250% higher than the uh, five-year average uh, in May, June per time. Both import and export for informal uh, cross-border trade decreased in the first six months of 2023 compared to same time last year. The increased demand for maize within the country has contributed to reducing quantity available for export, and there was also lower informal maize importers um, attributed due to the reduced market access in southern Malawi and Mozambique, mainly because of the destruction of the infrastructure caused by tropical cyclone Freddy. Next slide, please. To understand better the impact of crops or income losses, it will be good to have a closer look at the Malawi household economic baseline, which you, you see it in the graph above especially for the very poor uh, wealth group. As you can see on the left side, most very poor householders, they rely on own production as a major source of food. Uh, it's shown in green color, and along with income from labor also shown in blue bar bars in the middle figure. In addition to that, the staple food purchase comprises considerable portion of their expenditure, as shown on the figure on the right side, you'll see the dark brown shaded areas. Overall, this indicates that the increase in food price will have a significant effect on the very poor households. Next slide, please. To have a closer look at the Malawi 04 livelihood zone, which is Lake Chilwa, Palombe, many very poor and poor households typically produce food that's only enough to cover 50% of their 
annual kilocaloric needs. Besides, these households heavily rely on purchasing maize from the market to compensate for the shortfall. Areas such as Malawi 05 or 04 in the southern part has experienced a significant decline in crop production, ranging from 30 to 90 percent. As a result, households in these areas face increased deficit in both food and income in a short and medium term. The limited food production capacity of these households combined with reduced harvest resulting from cyclone impact intensifies their reliance on market purchases to fulfill their food needs by depleting essential livelihood assets. Next slide, please. To have a look at the maize production trend over the years, as you can see on the left side, uh, Malawi has recorded below average maize production in the current production year. That marks the third successive decline in maize harvest. As you know, maize is the, the most important food for Malawi. The reduction is mainly associated with the impacts of cyclone, reduced fertilizer utilization are the main reasons. And Malawi is currently dealing with high inflation, primarily caused by weaker export incomes, high national food prices, and fuel shortages, combined with the devaluation of Malawian kwacha. Next slide, please. As you can see, the national inflation has risen from 20 to about 30% in the past 12 months. According to the National Statistical Office, rising inflation primarily affects food prices with an increase around 40%. This directly impacts many poor and very poor families uh, by diminishing their purchasing power and restricting them from accessing basic food items. Low foreign exchange availability is resulting in rising inflation as Malawi depends on importers for most processed food. The foreign currency reserve were estimated at 40% lower compared to the same period last year and it falls below the minimum reserve level recommended by IMF. Next slide. Looking forward to the assumptions, the main harvest for the current production year is below average due to combined effect of the cyclone floodings and below average supplies of agricultural input. The winter harvest is mainly relying on irrigation and it's likely to be reduced also below average due to the impacts of cyclone since most of the irrigation canals have been destroyed or silted so it will take some time to re reconstruct them it's estimated that the total crop planted area will be below average um, because of uh, the mentioned reasons mainly um, siltation has been happening in the lowland and some fertile areas and the start of uh, the rainy season is likely to be delayed uh, due to El Nino impacts, and below average income, high food prices are also going to persist during the projection period. It's anticipated that the national food reserve will be below half of the required amount. Next slide, please. Looking at uh, most likely food security outcomes between June and September, it's expected that crisis or IPC phase three outcomes will persist um, in most southern districts, which are which were affected by Cyclone Freddy. These areas they have uh, experienced significant crop and livelihood losses, uh, resulting many poor and very poor families um, to deplete their own food before the normal period. As a result, these households will increasingly rely on purchasing food from the market. Additionally, the incomes are insufficient to afford adequate amount of food due to the persistent high food prices. This situation is expected to lead to food consumption gaps, widened food consumption gaps. So households will be resulting to crisis coping strategies um, by depleting um, some of their livelihood assets. Looking ahead to the lean period, 
from October to January, food security situation is expected also to deteriorate further, particularly in southern part of the country. Despite winter harvests, which is uh, expected between September and October, it's unlikely to improve the overall food security outcomes. And the humanitarian food assistance is insufficient and rising number of households in, in southern areas uh, are projected to remain in crisis or IPC phase three conditions. And we also expect some parts of the northern in Karoga district up in the north um, in the second phase of the projection are also expected to face similar situation. In general, there will be increased number of householders, especially in the southern part, facing high food consumption gaps, and they will continue to deplete essential livelihood assets to narrow the, the food consumption gaps. With this, I end Malawi presentation, and I will hand over to my colleague Lita for the next presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Mikhail. We will conclude this briefing with a quick look at the Democratic Republic of Congo, which remains uh, a country of high concern in the Southern Africa region. And in the DRC, conflict continues to be one of the key drivers of acute food insecurity, particularly in Eastern DRC. Um, in between 2021 and May of 2023, conflict in Ituri, North Kivu, and South Kivu made up over 90% of all conflict events in the country. And in Eastern DRC, more than 250 armed groups are reported to operate across five provinces, including 14 foreign armed groups. And the, the Allied Democratic Forces, or the ADF, the Mouvement du 23 Mars, the M23, the Co Cooperative pour le Développement du Congo, or CODECO, and Mai Mai Rebels in, uh, in North Kivu and Ituri remain the most prolific. So taking a bit of a closer look at conflict in each of these three provinces, um, following the resurgence of the M23 rebel group in 2022, the Congolese government remains unwilling to negotiate with the, with the armed group. In mid-March of 2023, the M23 rebel movement initially began to withdraw from occupied areas, notably in Masisi and Ruchuru territories in North Kivu, which allowed for the deployment of troops from the East African community, um, or the EACRF, the, their regional forces. Additionally, in early May, the Southern Africa Development Community, or SADC, announced its intention to deploy its own intervention force against the M23. Um, however, clashes between uh, M. Bantua and regional forces resumed in mid-May, with attacks taking place particularly in Masisi, Ruchuru, Virunga Park, Kibumba, and Kichanga territories. Next slide. Now, in Ituri, the Congolese and Ugandan armies began their second phase of joint operations against the ADF and the National Army for the Liberation of Uganda, who have been dispersed in several territories across the province. These joint operations have prompted repeated and regular retaliatory attacks by rebel groups against the civilian population in Ituri. Additionally, militiamen from Kodako, Zaire, the Patriotic Resistance Front of Ituri, and the Patriotic Force and Integrationists of Congo groups continue to attack civilians in Jugu and Mahagi territories in Ituri. Next slide. Finally, in South Kivu, which has um, recorded a notable decrease in conflict events in the past year and a half or so, um, with the support of the Burundian army, uh, Congolese soldiers are continuing to engage with armed groups, um, notably in Uvira and Fizi Highlands, um, which remain the key hotspots for attacks against local population and security forces in South Kivu. Um, though, as, uh, as I noted, um, counter operations um, have, have been more or less successful in South Kivu, leading to a decrease in conflict events. Next slide, please. However, uh, conflict in all three provinces is continuing to lead to large scale displacement with uh, these three provinces hosting the majority of displaced populations in the country. Um, though the withdrawal of M23 forces uh, in 
and around March have led to over 900,000 returnees in North Kivu. Um, mass displacement is still ongoing, particularly in North Kivu, but across Eastern DRC. Between March 2022 and May of 2023, so uh, in just over a year, over 3 million new IDPs were registered in these three provinces alone. And that brings the total IDPs in the country uh, to nearly 6.3 million as of May of 2023. Next slide. So taking a quick look at uh, seasonal progress in the DRC, the season bee harvest just ended around June in Northeast and North Central DRC. And the season was generally characterized by near average rainfall. The map on the right here shows NDVI, which is essentially a measure of vegetation greenness as of early June. And the gray to green uh, on this map shows average to about to above average greenness uh, across most of the country, further supporting ground reports of favorable agroclimactic conditions. Now, while globally the season was average with generally favorable conditions for the season B, um, heavy rainfall provoked severe flooding and landslides across many provinces in uh, eastern and northeastern DRC in early May. The worst uh, of being in Kalehi in South Kivu, where flooding and landslides in early May resulted in over 400 deaths, um, over 2,000 people missing, and nearly 1,500 people displaced. Additionally, these this flooding and landslides destroyed um, over 600 fields and temporarily cut off the national road between Goma and Bukavu and destroyed the main market. Now, while severe, the impacts uh, of flooding and landslides to food security are rather short term, with many households uh, directly that were directly affected able to return uh, to their localities to rebuild. And though those that lost productive assets remain of high concern, it should just be noted that Kalehi has a population of over 900,000 people. So the population that was directly affected by these floods represents less than 1% of the total population of the territory. Additionally, while the national road was cut off, which did disrupt trade flows, and while the market was destroyed, this really was only temporary and the main road was, within use, uh, was in use within a, a few weeks. Next slide. So generally in the DRC, information on production is rather limited. Production data is typically collected by the Ministry of Agriculture, um, but due to both funding and logistical constraints, production estimates are usually done using archived data at the provincial level, and then estimates are made um, on current production levels. And these official estimates have not been done since the 2019 to 2020 season. So in the absence of this data, FuseNet typically relies on qualitative field assessments, information from key informants and partners, and remote sensing data, such as the map you saw earlier, um, to make estimates on production. Um, FuseNet was able to conduct a field assessment to Beni in Ituri province and was able to speak with key informants in Ruturu territory to better understand planting conditions and the season bee harvest in general. Um, which confirmed that while agroclimatic conditions were generally favorable, conflict does remain the main constraint to agricultural activities in eastern DRC. However, it has been observed that some displaced populations may stay in IDP hosting sites, but then go back to their place of origin to plant or conduct um, agricultural activities and essentially go between their IDP hosting sites and their place of origin. Um, However, even for those who are not displaced or who are able to do that, um, agricultural activities are typically limited to fields closest to villages in order to mitigate further security risks. Um, in Jugu territory, for example, key informants indicated that several localities were able to engage in agricultural activities, albeit at below average levels. So, for example, in four out of six of the chefferies of Jugu, um, it's estimated that between 60 to 70 percent of agricultural households were able to cultivate uh, to some degree. However, it was also noted that in areas where households were able to engage in agricultural activities or were able to cultivate, fields are sometimes harvested by militias um, or even by the, um, the Congolese army um, when they don't necessarily receive their um, rations in a timely manner. 
So overall, um, key informants and our um, field visit confirmed that um, production in Eastern DRC has declined compared to average. Um, it's estimated that compared to 2018, before the resurgence of the crisis in Eastern DRC, quantities harvested um, are about half compared to, to um, before 2018. Next slide, please. So as Benja mentioned earlier in the briefing, inflation has continued to rise in the DRC, hitting a high of 26% in May of 2023. And this is driven primarily by persisting high food and transportation costs. The graph on this slide shows price trends for maize flour, sorry, for maize meal and vegetable oil across key markets in Eastern DRC. And we are generally observing that prices are uh, generally following their seasonal trends, um, though some markets in Eastern DRC have registered atypical price increases uh, in May and June, when we wouldn't typically start seeing prices decrease following the season bee harvest. And these atypical price increases are likely due to sporadically disrupted trade flows from conflict that then lead to temporary food shortages in certain markets, as well as the persisting depreciation of the national of the national currency um, that hit a 13 percent uh, year on year depreciation in May of 2023. Staple food prices uh, globally, though, are remaining above average, and this is due to the persisting high uh, fuel prices, which leads to a subsequent increase in the cost of transportation, as well as conflict, particularly in Ituri, North and South Kivu, that then constrains access to roads and dissuades the regular supply to markets. And finally, um, the, uh, due to the depreciation of the Congolese franc that I that I just mentioned. Next slide, please. So looking quickly at our assumptions through January 2024, we anticipate the conflict will continue at currently observed levels, um, particularly in, in the three provinces of highest concern, um, and high levels of displacement will likely persist in Northeast and Central East DRC. Um, due to this conflict, um, agricultural activities and the resultant harvests um, will remain below average, uh, particularly in conflict-affected areas. And while we anticipate prices will generally follow seasonal trends, they will remain above average, as we can see on the graph on this slide, which is showing the projected price of yellow maize meal in Kinshasa through, uh, through next year. And finally, um, poor households will continue to depend on their typical sources of income, though uh, with mixed results, um, as income from mining will remain average to about to above average, um, and informal labor will remain average. Um, income from agricultural labor will trend downwards um, and remain below average, mainly to to uh, decreased demand for agricultural labor. Next slide. So as we look at our projected food security outcomes for the DRC, most households uh, are constrained by below average production during both season A earlier this year and this season B. Um, though households in the majority of the center of the country are consuming their own harvests uh, in, in June and July, um, that while below average are able to allow households to meet their food needs. In the north of the country, harvests are near average and income from agricultural labor is sufficient for them to also meet their non-food needs, resulting in minimal IPC phase one outcomes in Bayuele, Oyuele, and Chopo, for example. In most of the rest of the country, though, households likely are not able to meet their non-food needs and are facing stressed IPC phase two outcomes as their incomes remain constrained from low demand for agricultural labor and reduced access to mines. So in these areas, June to July, as I mentioned, represent the post-harvest period. And by August, households will likely begin depleting their stocks and be dependent on the market as they enter the main lean season from October through January, uh, shown in the map on the right. We anticipate that worst conflict affected areas such as Irumu and Jugu in Ituri, Uvira and Fizi in South Kivu, and Beni, Ruchuru and Masisi in North Kivu 
will continue to face crisis IPC phase three outcomes throughout the projection period as poor households access to their typical livelihoods remain significantly disrupted. And in these areas, production was low and households remain atypically dependent on the on market purchases already in June um, amid high staple food prices and reduced access to income earning activities. So then as we move into the lean season from October through January, we anticipate an increase in the population facing crisis IPC phase three outcomes and a likely increase in the population facing emergency outcomes, um, particularly displaced households that are unable to uh, access their fields or unable to cultivate at all, um, primarily in Jugu and Richuru territories. And with that, I'm happy to conclude our South Africa regional briefing and take any questions.